Okay, good morning, everyone. Again, welcome to our Sunday School lesson. This is May the 14th, 2023. And we have the title of our lesson today, Jumping for Joy. And it's taking the next step. So all this month, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit and what happened in Acts. So we're still in the book of Acts. And we're going to be continuing and looking at a different uh, manifestation. So our overview for this morning, we have a couple of things we're doing. We're going to first look at the scripture, which is from Acts 3, 1 through 11. Then I have an introduction activity I want y'all to engage in. Then we'll go a little in depth into the scripture. We'll have our lesson summary, and then Reverend Davis will come in and close us out with his last comments and prayer. Before I get started, I always need to say Happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers. Uh, and like the little saying says, to all the tough, hardworking, patient, loving, and all around amazing moms out there, Happy Mother's Day to you. Mm -hmm. And we'll get started with prayer, so I'm going to ask you know, Sister Barbara Bell if she will start us off. Good morning, First Baptist Church. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you today giving you praise, honor, and glory. Lord, this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we want to thank you for all the mothers today as we celebrate Mother's Day Lord, we ask for forgiveness of our sins. Anything we said, did, or even thought that wasn't of you, forgive us. And we thank you that you're faithful and just to forgive us our sins. We lift up the Sunday school and teacher today. We ask for an anointing on the lesson today. Let us glean what you are teaching us today. We ask all of this in your precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And once thanks, Sister Bell, for doing that for us and opening us up with prayer. And so we're going to go right into the lesson as I shared Acts 3, 1 through 11. This has been the chapter we've been looking at for the last couple of lessons. And so this starts off with Peter and John. So I'm going to use the Bible experience to play it, and we will start right now. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now, a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful. I beg of you. Where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Alms for the poor. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, Look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beulah. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. While the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. So a very powerful lesson here that we hear from the scripture. So we're gonna go on. And so I'm going to start off with an introduction activity. And so I'm going to start off by asking you a question. So you and your family, you're walking up the steps for Sunday morning services here at First Baptist, and you're in a hurry because one of your children is on program, and you want to try to get settled before the service starts. And then sitting at the bottom of one of the steps is a man dressed in some rough and disheveled clothing. He has a sign that says, I lost my job due to an injury. We'll work for food. Please help me. So what would you do in that situation? So it's Sunday morning, you have your Sunday best on, you're coming in, you got a lot to do, you have something that's on program you're trying to get to, and you see someone sitting right there at the base of the steps where they have the flower, the flower planter at, and they're saying like, we'll work for food, lost my job. So what would you do? So take a few minutes to think about that, and then we'll have you to share out with us as a group. I didn't mean to hit you with something so hard first thing in the morning. But again, what would you do? So you're you're coming up, you see someone, 
And so I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can get some of you to respond. And as I shared, there's people here in the room that they can hear you now that we had the microphone and everything turned on on the camera. So what would you do? And you can unmute yourself. You don't have to. Oh, you, you need to unmute yourself with the rest. Probably wouldn't be the best thing to do, but I'd probably give them some money and, and run on in church. Okay. <laughs> so you so you see he has a physical need, and so you would give him some money and then go on into the church. Okay. So thank you for sharing that. Anyone else? That's not a bad answer. Any, anybody else want to take a stab at that one? Now, I want to call people out. I know there's people on here, but I'll, I'll, I'll move on because nobody wants to speak. So does anyone else want to uh, answer that question again? Sunday morning, someone on the set. Well, we got more people coming in. Go ahead, Dr. Grace. Well, I'd like to share a similar experience you know, that happened in a certain Sundays ago when I was coming in and then sitting on the steps. And he was obviously the third That's an excellent, um, very similar situation. Again, if you can tell if somebody is in need and you can't tell if it's spiritual or physical, and sometimes it's both. And so trying to reach out and connect with that person. Um, and that's what we're going to look at in lesson day. So Dr. Green answered that beautifully. And then Braxton did too. But again, we all have hearts. And when we see people, you know, we don't want to just walk by somebody and ignore them. So it's so important that we are reaching out. Um, Mr. Fox is disturbing our class by talking. So if you have something to you want to share about the lesson? Okay. <laughs> All right. So guys, I I hope we all, all go on Zoom. You can now see the class and hear them as well. So we have a new camera system. So, uh, okay. All right. so we're going to move on. Thank you. So. But, but again, we're going to look at those topics as more because it's very, it's something that can happen. And like Dr. Richard, that just happened this and past Sunday. And these are things that happen on a regular basis. We're in the middle of town. We're not like some, some far off uh, little place out in the country. So, and even there, things like that happen too, but definitely here in town. So, these are things to think about and to ponder when we go through these situations. Yeah. All right. So, we're going to move on so we can go into the rest of our lesson for today. So, so I have a few things that I want to to ponder as we go through the lesson today. Give me one second to move so I can see. Um, so what are Christians called to do with regards to helping the needy and disadvantaged in society? So what are we called to do? Um, can prayer and faith result in healing? And we're going to talk about that this morning too. So can prayer and faith result in healing? That we live in, remember, they used to be called a postmodern society. We live in a modern society with science and doctors and technology. So we're going to talk through that as well. And then what do you have to praise God for today? So we should praise him daily, but do you have some things you praise him for today? Because the man in the story truly had something to praise God for. So we're going to look at those things as we go through the lesson today. But I want you to ponder, and hopefully we'll cover all three of those today. So going back to Acts 3, let's take a more in-depth look at the scripture. So we heard in the Bible experience, it read for us this text. And it says, one day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. So we're going to stop right there. So then the scripture said, they were going up at the time of prayer. So, so why does the scripture specify that Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer? 
what is the time of prayer for Christians today? So that's a little odd, because we never saw in the New Testament where it says there's a specific time to pray. So why do you think it says that they were going at the time of prayer? Well, think about that. Why do you think it says they were going at the time of prayer? And anybody online or in the room can answer that. I know we have some Bible scholars in here, so I know that they can answer that question. So, all right, I'm going to call on some people if I don't get to. Okay, go ahead, Ms. Braxton. I appreciate you always. You got to unmute yourself, though, Ms. Braxton. Unmute yourself. Probably yeah. wanted to indicate it was the time that church services would be going on. And so, that's sort of like what you asked in the beginning to see what they would do first. Would they take care of the man or would they go on to the church service? So excellent point. And she's absolutely right. You, go, you about to say something else. Go ahead. You about to say something else. I was, I was going to say, no, that's all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's fine. Well, you think about it. You just come back and tell us what you were ready to say. Not a problem. So, no, so Ms. Braxton is right. So, what are, so we know that the apostles, even though they had believed in Jesus Christ and they were following him, they were still Jewish. And so there were certain traditions and customs, just like we come to church on Sundays, but we have people like Seven Day Adventists or they go on Saturday. So it was their custom. So the Jewish custom is you went to the temple in Jerusalem at certain appointed times for prayer because the priests would be there and they'd be doing different things for the remission of sin or atonement of sin. So they went at the appointed time. Now for Christians today, do we have an appointed time to pray? pray? And answer is not really. Not, you pray whenever the spirit leads you to pray. Now we do have some traditional things we do. Like sometimes people will pray in the morning um, sometimes people, a lot of churches, even our church, they have like corporate prayer time, so they'll get people together to pray and say, we're going to set aside this time at noon time or um, six o'clock in the morning. Uh, we always pray during a worship service, but there is a specific time. Uh, I know that our brothers and sisters who are Islamic or Muslim, they have very specific times that they pray and they pray towards Mecca, and they have them set aside to make sure that you are praying on a daily basis. But sometimes you might need to pray five, six, seven, eight times a day, depending on your situation. So, yeah, you know, that's why it's always good to have that connection with God. Oh, go ahead, Dr. Grace. Also, I think it you know, teaches us that prayer is important and worshiping together is important. But there are some things that you see someone in need, but some things in some circumstances that are more important than attending Right. So there's something that is more important. And so we have to always make sure we focus on those more important things at one point. Mm -hmm. And the oh, please, oh. Because first you may have, even though you see a need to pray, you may have to try to help to meet the needs first, and then you can take it to the Lord. Right. I mean, and so that's actually the second part of scripture. So they, like again, they're going at the point in time, but like Tacoma just said, uh, this man has been laying from birth sitting at the gate called Beautiful. And then when Peter and John's um, about to enter, he asked them for money. And Peter looked straight at him as did John. And then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. And so we talk about this, and I asked the question here about the gate beautiful. Why was the man carried to the temple gate called beautiful? And the, and the commentary goes into a lot of detail. So this man, it's not like someone got in that bad accident. He had been lame since birth. And so back in those days, you did not have social security, didn't have welfare, didn't have food stamps. So if you were in need, traditionally, you would go to the temple and the priest would try to take care of your needs there. And other situations, um, people would just come by. So like it was expected if the God, Lord had blessed you and that you had the means, if you saw a brother or sister that was in need, you were supposed to give um, to take care of the physical needs. Um, Muslims practice that as part of their um, religious beliefs too. They're supposed to give alms to the poor and that's something that's in one of their five tenets. The same thing for Jews at that time. If you saw someone in need, you were supposed to reach out and do what you could to help if it was in your ability to do so. So when the Braxton had shared it earlier, she was following what you know what people normally do. You see somebody, then ask them questions, you just give to them. Now, granted, in those days, you kind of knew people. Now, nowadays it's a little tricky because you have people who 
you know, they sitting there for off and then like an hour later, they're going to get an, a BMW and drive off. So we have a lot of people that try to scam the system nowadays. But it goes back to our, if you're doing the right thing, this is not on you, it's on a person that tried to scam the system. So, but again, it only, you had the means to do that. But it also talks about the fact that the fact that people actually took him there. So he had people who knew him, either family or friends. And so this was legitimate because they knew he was lame. And so they were taking him there every day to make sure that he had his provisions. So interesting. And so I will, um, I like to give a little unique information. So when we think about the temple, and we have like a replica here of Solomon's temple. Now today, of course, it was destroyed by the Romans, so you can't see that today. But back in those days, this is what it would look like. And it's a little different. So we think that we come to church, that's like a temple, but that's not how they did it back in the day. They had a huge temple mound. And so you see all the brickwork and stonework. That's the temple mound, so anybody could walk up to the temple mound. But then behind these walls, you had to be a specific, you had to be of the Jewish faith, and they had different components, which I'll show you on the next slide. And so but people went there on a regular basis because Jesus said, my house should be called a house of prayer. And so people went there for prayers, for atonement. And then people who had disabilities was very common back in the ancient world. And so people would customarily, again, give them assistance at the temple, which is why people come to churches uh, sometimes because they see that as a symbol. And so when you look at the outer court, so the gate beautiful is right here. So in that old, the other picture I just showed you is kind of hard to tell. But people normally did not go into the, the Holy of Holies or into that stone temple. That was just for the priests and the Levites. Most people came to what they call the outer court. And then right here, the altar was not inside the actual building. It was outside because they would sacrifice lambs and doves. And that's where the priests would go before the people. They would sprinkle the blood or pour the water. And they would bless them outside because you couldn't burn stuff up inside the, the temple. That would be a problem. But this is where people would normally gather for services and for prayers. And it was a very beautiful, very ornate area. <clears throat> and so this is where he was at, at the gate beautiful. So right before you walked into this beautiful courtyard is where you found the bears. Yeah. You know, today, the Mormon church is set up somewhat like this. One of my students came back into town um, because in Richmond, they are doing a temple. And, and at this point, the outer area, you can visit, you can worship, you can pray, but the inner sanctum is, is reserved. And so he was encouraging us to come take a look um, at the outer area. And um, then when they finish the whole temple, then it's restricted, of course, to the inner sanctum. So this is still, you know, alive today. That is so interesting. See, and it's so neat when we get to talk to other people in different faiths yeah. and we get to see that. Yeah. Wait, but so again, very, so, so yeah, go ahead. Yeah. And I know that charter, like you said, it was the Roman case, then the king was the leper. So it's segregated based on what? Sex and no, on, on these, so, so, so even, um, some churches used to do that. You can hear that, like the Quakers and things like that. They would separate. You have a door for women and a door for men, and they would keep them separate. So back in the Jewish tradition, yeah, there was a court just, just for the women so that they could come in and worship. And then you have places where the men would go. So it was more like back in this customary. You didn't kind of mix for certain purposes so that you could stay focused on the spirit and different things. And then, like you said, yeah, they would have a chamber for lepers, and so they would have different things. Like in, for the priest, the chamber for the oil and the wines, that was that was where they would store things to take it up to the altar for sacrifice and different things. So very purposeful. Everything they had in there was very purposeful and it was structured. A lot of this goes back to Leviticus and Numbers, where they kind of break it down what the priests and the Levites were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's so different now because we don't we're not we don't call that say structure. We try to follow some semblances in our church, but it's not very, it's not like how the Jewish uh, authority used to do things. Uh -huh. so not just to that extent. You have some of your more orthodox Jews. I think they follow some similar things, not exactly the same. Most of our Jews, like today in America, are what are called reform Jews. Yeah. And so they've made some changes like how they do things. You know, when you look at our church, uh, it does, it is similar to the pulpit. Is uh, designated for 
like, and then even like some of the tables, like, you know, we have on the pulpit, I mean, on the altar where the community traders is, they have the candles and different things. So, yeah, they, we try to emulate some things, but it's just not really that, right? Mm -hmm. But but that's also reason why, like, you know, clergy are the ones that sit up in the pulpit. You'll just have random people, you know, who try not to have this mm -hmm. odd people going up to the pulpit. Okay. All right. And so then going back to um, Acts, we see where John and Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth's walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went from them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were full of wonder and amazement at what they saw. And so I asked the question, but you kind of already answered this. I said, how does Peter set a model response for modern day Christians? And then in what ways does Peter's response not set an example? So we kind of talked through that. Because again, they really and truly should have, if they had money, they should have given alms to him because that was kind of a requirement, but they really truly didn't have any money on them. So they gave them the best that they had, which was, you know, they had the authority and the power to be with Jesus. So they knew they could give him something that'd be more meaningful. They clearly see that. And so just kind of discussion. Any thoughts on that about him setting that example for modern day Christians with, with what he did? I mean, Dr. Grace kind of gave us the example of what she did with the young lady she saw outside, which is a model example combining the two. So we're, we're just called to act. We're not called to ignore people. So either you, you, if you don't have, you pray for them and say, like, hey, like, I'll keep you in prayer. Like, I hope you're going better. You know, somebody cares about you. And you do that for them. If you do have the means to give, then you should give and do that as well. Well, you know, sometimes I think people, just by acknowledging their presence, so we get so busy and hustle and bustle that we forget that we see people just walk on by, kind of like the Good Samaritan priest had somewhere to go, and the Levi had somewhere to go, but the Samaritan stopped and tried to help. So those are things we have to just keep in mind, like not to get so caught up in busy stuff that we forget about people. Because that's what Jesus did. Jesus reached out to prostitutes and tax collectors and people who were in need. Um, and he called roughly to like the priests and the and the, and the church officials because they were not looking at the more important things. They were so caught up in rituals and laws that they forgot about people, which is what God had sent um, Jesus down to do, to redeem mankind back to him. And so this is what was the man to constantly and heal quite naturally any of us. I hope that the Lord had <laughs> even healed. And he, he was praising and shouting and jumping and going all over the place. And so I always ask the question, what are ways people show appreciation and thanks to God for the things they have done for them? Um, it might not be jumping, but people do in different ways show appreciation. What are some different ways that people do show appreciation uh, to God for the things they have done? Well, they tell others, and that's a testimony. <laughs> yeah, they testify. And, and he, the biggest thing he said that if you, if you believe that he did something, uh, he said, follow my commandments, like <laughs> love, mercy, walk just, but he just follow his commandments, living that life, being a witness uh, for him on a daily basis. So we all, we don't all, some people, they get into it and they can shout and sing. Some people just get quiet and they like do a prayer. Uh, some people get into like a state where they're like in um, relationship with him. So it's not all going to look the same, but there should be some outward expression of praise to God. And even the scripture said, like everything that has breath, praise the Lord. And so even in our church covenant, we read, we had read this first Sunday, and it was on that line that said, and it said that big chunk that said, we engage by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church and knowledge of holiness. Uh, and to give it a place in our affection, prayers, and services above every organization of human origin. And I must get down to the bottom where it said, um, as God has prospered us towards the expense for support of a faithful and evangelical ministry among us, the relief of the poor, and to spread the gospel throughout the world. So what that means is, again, when we see people in need of disadvantage or poor, we're supposed to be doing that. Because we say that every first Sunday, that that's what we committed to as a church body, and we're going to, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, to do those type of things, the relief of the poor, and then to spread the gospel. So in this situation, you're doing both. Not only did they 
provide relief to the poor, they also spread the gospel by letting them know through Jesus Christ that he was healed and saved. <laughs> and so I want to give everyone just a moment to reflect, because I almost finished the lesson, uh, a few things about what God has done for you. So you don't have to share it out, but there's a song that the choir has done here before, but as he's done so much for me, I cannot tell it all. And so that gives you a chance to kind of sit back and do some reflection on some of the things that God has done for you in your life. shouting and jumping because he knew the great things that um, Jesus had done for him because he had been lame we don't know for 10, 15, 20, 30 we don't know how long he had been lame but he'd been brought every day faithfully and it wasn't until Jesus that he received his healing and so there's an interesting thing there so we a lot of the challenges that we face today as Christians deal with this whole uh, conversation about science versus faith mm -hmm. and so like in our modern day society is there a conflict between faith and science uh, we have a lot of younger people who go off to college and they're like, you know what, I don't believe all this stuff talking about the man got healed. That's just some make-believe fake story. Um, that's not true. Things like that don't happen today. And it is so interesting because there's two things that came up. The National Geographic actually did an article on it uh, a couple of years ago, and it was called The Healing Power of Faith. And in that, the writer went and they went looking at a lot of different things to say, is there, you know, is this really true? Can people really be healed by faith? And so what he found is that when you work science and faith work together, then it really helps improve the healing process. They said there's many situations where they found that people um, who have been extremely sick, doctors have kind of said, well, you have like a 50 or even less than that. You have like a 40% chance of surviving. 
And then they said, they stepped in and they said, well, the two working together, they were healed. Mm -hmm. And they had found that there were many studies that said those who attend religious services on a regular basis, they tend to have increased blood pressure, improved immune systems, and they tend to have longer life. And when they ask people, why do you feel you look so long? They thought the Lord bless me every day. So those are some things they said that is a um, how of faith does provide healing. And so there should not be a contradiction. Uh, National Geographic also has a Morgan Freeman was doing a series talking about uh, the power of God or what is God. And so one of those are, um, I didn't have time to do it today, but it's a, a series called The Miracles of God. And he talks about that. He even talked about his own spirit that he was about to die. And he said that his grandmother then prayed for him. And then somehow the pneumonia cleared up and all the things that were getting ready to happen. He was still in the hospital. But those are the things that happen when we add faith and science together. So it should not be a contradiction. There should not be conflict between the two. The two do work together uh, in harmony. And so just bringing um, everything to a close today with the lesson. You know, as Christians, we are called today to assist the needy and the disadvantaged, both with physical needs and more importantly, spiritual needs. And healing is a combination of faith and science working in concert together. And even though it gets easy to get caught up in the hustle and bustle of life, uh, we always need to stop and take time to thank and acknowledge God for the things that he has done for us and he does for each and every day. So I'm going to close it here and see if there's any final thoughts we have in time. So I'm going to let um, Dr. Grace uh, go ahead and share some, uh, some thoughts and anybody else in the room. Go ahead, Dr. Grace. Um, I, I have difficulty with um, the fact And that's again, and so that's why we try to, um, like I said, with uh, conflict, and we try to talk through that. And this is a very complicated um, scenario. It's a complicated concept. And so, like I said, but the biggest thing I want to share with people is just that don't get caught up by saying there's no such thing as healing through faith, because there is. Um, because some people try to say, oh, you don't need science to use me faith. And other people say, you don't need faith to use me science. There doesn't have to be conflict between the two. The two can go. But again, it's, it's something, again, faith is something that is substance of things, hope for, and the things not seen. And so those are things that we vote for as well. And when you think about it, um, God is in the doctor. Yeah, and, that, and that's one of the things that they had mentioned in the article is that a lot of the doctors said, you know, I, I believe in God. He said, he's the one that gets me the revelation. So when I go into that room to work on a patient, mm -hmm. you know, I ask for, I pray first, and then I go into that situation. So they're saying like the doctor guides the hand. I mean, the, the doctor, the science books are the ones that tell them how to do it, but the Lord is the one that kind of guides and pushes them through those situations. Mm -hmm. And even in the Old Testament, they talk about having the bomb of Gilead, which was a salve, which they still have today, is when people had skin rashes or they had certain uh, burns or things, they could put that on and that would soothe it. So there, there are things even in the Old Testament where they use certain uh, medications or ointments, not to say that that's all it's sown, but they even use that in situations of, of pain. So any other comments before we turn it over? I see Reverend Davis on. Any other comments uh, before we turn it over to Dr. Davis? All right. Well, again, we want to thank everyone for your participation. And like I said, if you are more than welcome to come, as you can see, if you would like to come for Sunday school, um, it is open downstairs. Um, it will be heard and seen on the camera. And then for those of you who are Zoom, you can still stay on. We'll be doing this hybrid for quite some time. Um, but we do want to thank you for your time today. And Reverend Davis, I'm going to stop sharing so I can turn it back over to you. Amen. Amen. We want to thank Deacon Butler for uh, this beautiful lesson this morning, jumping for joy. 
Uh, this was a man who had been laid at the gate called Beautiful for many, 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 many days, many years. And uh, Peter and John uh, went up to the temple and this man, uh, expecting uh, Peter and John uh, to give him some arms, but they gave him something far more than uh, money. They gave him something that he could do for himself. And it struck me when Peter and John said, look on us, look on us. Why did they want the man to look on them? Look, we don't, we are not rich ourselves. Uh, we don't have an abundance ourselves. And then he said, silver and gold, we don't have, but such that we have, such that we have, we what? We give it to you. And so my brothers and sisters, we see that all we have to do is give Christ because Christ is uh, what people need in order to meet all of their needs. This man needed something more than just arms. He needed to walk. And so his greatest need was receiving Christ. And after receiving Christ, he what? He received a miracle. And once he received that miracle, what did he do? He leaped up and he walked and he entered into the temple, leaping and praising God, praising God for something he didn't expect. This is what I call an unexpected blessing. This is an unexpected blessing. He expected arms from Peter and John, but he did not expect to walk into the temple leaping and praising God. See, you and I should be rejoicing because not so much of what God does for us today, but what God has done for us in the past. A lot of people are not thankful. A lot of people go around with their heads down in melancholy. But if you could just compare the blessings that you have against other people who don't even have a roof over their heads, don't have shoes on their feet. And yet look at all that we have. That ought to make us want to come into the temple uh, leaping and praising God. Why praise God? Because he experienced a miracle. And we have to understand that when we are blessed, it is expected by heaven that we would show, that we would show an outward expression of what God has done for us. So the, the question is, when the world looks on the church, what do they see? What do they see? We may not be rich. We may not be wealthy. We may not be uh, 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 anything that's real respected in the world. But what we do have, we have something that the world needs. And we should not forsake giving that to the world. You know, a lot of time I tell people, you need more than houses and land. We need more than a state of our art building. What we need is Christ. And once the human person is built up, then everything else will come. But if you build the brick and mortar before you build the people, then the brick and mortar gonna suffer because what? You haven't built the first thing. And the first thing we need to build up, we need to build up other people. And so therefore this man receives something that he didn't expect unexpected blessings. And I believe that there are some unexpected blessings coming our way. We just don't know. But what we have to do is constantly be in a posture, be in a posture to receive those unexpected blessings. And when they do come, unexpected, uh, expected, when we do receive blessings, we ought to rejoice and thank God. We ought to, that ought to be our response. It ought to be the church's response. We should not, we should not uh, be well blessed and not show some outward expressions. It's not about status. It's not about degrees. It's, it's about receiving something from God that meets our deepest needs. So I want to thank Deacon Butler uh, and all of you who chimed in on this wonderful lesson. Uh, 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 it's, it's just a miracle. A miracle happened at the door and the steps of the church. And instead of him moving away from the temple, he entered the temple. A lot of people get blessed. They move away from the temple. They move away from the house of God. But this man, 
He didn't move away. He went in. And that's what you and I need to do. Let us pray. Father God, we just want to thank you for all of your blessings. We want to thank you for your miracles. And Father, we pray that as the world look on us, Father, whatever they see that we are lacking, one thing we don't want to lack, and that is giving you to the world. And so, Father, we pray, Lord, that we give you silver and gold we have not, but such that we have, the little that we have. Help us to give what we do have. And Lord, what we do have, you can take it and make it even greater. And so, Father, we thank you for this story. And Lord, we know this is just not a one time in human history. You still are lifting people up. You're still healing people. You're still blessing people. You're still setting people free. Lord, you're still cutting loose stammering tongues. You're still doing all of these things. And we pray, Father, when these who have been recipients of your blessings, that they'll do just like this man. They'll move into the praise. They'll move into the building. They'll come into the temple rather than to move away from it. But too often, too many people are blessed and they move away from the temple. But thank God this man, he moved into the temple, leaping and praising God. And Father, we just wanna thank you. Remember the sick and shut in among us. We pray you continue to bless our teachers and our hearers. And we pray, Father, that you continue to bless our mothers, our grandmothers, our godmothers, all mothers who have served in a role of loving and, and nurturing. We give them honor today for the great things they've done. We can't pay them for what they have done and what they are doing, but we certainly can love on them and respect them. Now that we are closing out our Sunday school and entering into worship, we pray we'll be just like this young man, this, this man, We'll come in praising God for all that he's done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.